Hi, my name is Arlene Westerhoff, and I am the leader of the Prophetic Council for the Netherlands, and I also co-lead the European Prophetic Council, a council consisting of more than 70 prophets from 21 European nations, together with Dr. Sharon Stone of the United Kingdom. Now that the inauguration of the new president in the United States has taken place, I wanted to do this broadcast because I believe that we as prophets and God's prophetic people in the nations need to sit down and take a look at what happened. Why all of the prophetic words that Donald Trump would be reelected in 2020 did not come to pass and what we as prophetic movement in the nations need to learn from this. And whether you're believing that the elections are not over yet, that fraud will still be proven, I just say I bless you in that. What I'm about to say is not being done with the heart of finger pointing or participating in the blame game. What I'm about to say is also in no way a political statement. My heart has always been to see healthy prophetic cultures emerged in the nations. Prophecy can be a great blessing. How many of us haven't been blessed by a personal prophetic word that has been given to us? Prophecy, however, can also cause damage. And in order to avoid the prophetic movement losing its credibility, we have to sometimes take a step backward, examine what happened, and try to learn from it. Now, the first thing I want to say is that I do not believe that there has been talk of false prophecy. Rather, I believe that we may have had inaccurate prophecies, certainly. An inaccurate prophetic word is a word that is spoken out that later does not align with the facts. There could also have been talk of presumption in our prophesying. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, we read, And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word of the Lord, which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if that thing does not happen or come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. The prophet has spoken presumptuously, and you shall not be afraid of him. And so that is presumptuous prophecy sometimes, you know, that we want something to happen so badly that we figure that God does too, and it will happen as we expect. The difference between inaccurate prophecy and false, and false prophecy, however, is that the Latin word for false is falera, and that means to lie or to deliberately mislead people and to lead them away from God. Now, I know many of the American prophets who prophesied a Trump win personally, and I do not believe that any of them set out to lie or to mislead people. They prophesied sincerely on the basis of what they felt that God had revealed to them. And so I do believe that there is talk here more of inaccurate prophecy and uh, also probably presumptuous prophecy. In our Living in Your Destiny Schools of the Prophets, we teach that all prophetic words needed to, need to be tested. But that is not the only, you know, it's just, it needs to be tested, but the accuracy of a word is not the only measurement that God uses when he evaluates whether someone is a true prophet or not. Prophet Nathan in the Old Testament who served King David, when David said to Nathan, I want to build, a house for the Lord. I live in a palace and God's, uh, yeah, God's house is still housed in a tent. Nathan looked at David and he immediately thought, this is a man after God's own heart. This is also God's will. God's hand is on David. And so he said to King David, he said, go ahead, King, and do it. The Lord is with you. Nathan actually spoke presumptuously. Why? Because he thought one plus one is two. This must be God's will. However, shortly thereafter, the Lord spoke to him and said, no, it's not David who will build my house, but his son Solomon. And so Nathan needed to go back to David and to correct his prophecy. And Solomon did build the house of the Lord. 
Now, in Old Testament scriptures, because what that prophetic word that Nathan spoke to David did not come to pass, he should have been stoned. However, he wasn't. And God even used Nathan later, a few years later, to correct David when he sinned with Bathsheba. What do we need to learn from this? God's evaluation of whether or not someone is a true prophet or not is not just the accuracy of the words they speak, but is also the strength of their character. Nathan was not stoned because David knew his character. He knew Nathan's sincerity of heart and he knew Nathan's track record. So we don't write anybody off because of one inaccurate word. It's both the accuracy and the character of people that we need to look at when judging prophetic words. But we go back to the original question, how could this have happened? There are a few possible reasons that I want to discuss with you now. Number one, as I said, prophetic words could have been presumptuous. They came from our mind. Many people wanted Donald Trump to win. Why? Because his stance on abortion, his pro-life stance and his pro-Israel stance certainly align with scripture. And so we figured this must be God's choice. This must be God's will. A second possible reason for this going wrong on such a large level is because prophetic people and some prophetic people didn't realize the level of authority that God had given them in prophesying. I make a distinction between the office of the prophet found in Ephesians chapter 4 and the gift of prophecy found in 1 Corinthians 14. The gift of prophecy functions in the area of comfort, of encouragement, of building people up. And many people with a prophetic gift can prophesy accurately when they deliver personal prophetic words. However, many of those with the prophetic gift are not called to deliver national words on that level. Not everyone is called to prophesy over nations, but we are all called to prophesy. So some people may have been prophesying beyond their metron and beyond the level of authority and prophecy that God had given them. A third possible reason is that some people just allowed them to get themselves to get caught up in the masses. You know, this prophet and that prophet and that prophet and that person is saying it. Therefore, it must be God's will and it's my heart too, so we go along with it. That's a very human thing to do. Number four is fear. A number of the prophets said have since apologized for speaking out words that have not come to pass, in, order, in other words, that Donald Trump has not been inaugurated as the next U.S. president, have received death threats from brothers and sisters in the Lord. This cannot be, this is not right in any way, shape, or form. When we allow our political opinion to separate us as brothers and sisters, then we have gone too far. Jesus's prayer in John chapter 17, the last prayer that he spoke out, one of the last before he was crucified was, Father, may they be one as you and I are one so that the world will know that you sent me. That's our job here on this earth, to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom of God. And we do that also by walking in unity with each other. So fear could have been Another reason, fear of persecution, fear of losing our reputations or our platforms. And a fifth reason, and this is not exhausted, these are just a few reasons that the Lord has shown me, is that others didn't speak up because they knew they wouldn't be heard. I was speaking to a couple in leadership in a church here in the Netherlands recently, just before the elections, and I said to them, you know, a lot of People are prophesying a Trump win, but I'm looking at those who are not prophesying a Trump win, who are also seasoned prophets with a good character and a strong, strong track record. And one of these prophets even said, you know, I would like him to win, but God has not told me specifically that he would. 
And that was also the case. I not only looked at those who were prophesying for, and we need to look at that, but also those who did not prophesy, that God had definitely told them that this would happen. And so some people didn't speak up, or they spoke up and said, I wish, I hope, but it, God didn't tell me. And others didn't speak up simply because they knew they wouldn't be heard. As the Netherlands Prophetic Council, we have made a decision long ago that we will not prophesy uh, for a political candidate from podiums. Why? And people don't have to agree with me, but why have we made that decision? Because as soon as we take a side, we become biased for the one individual and our eyes sometimes get blinded to the false. Every single one of us are human beings and we have our strengths, but we definitely have our weaknesses. And bias can blind us to the faults of people that God also wants us to see. Also, if we choose sides when prophesying, it might be that God one day calls us to prophesy or would want to call us to prophesy for the other person whose side we did not choose. And in that case, we lose credibility. In 1 Kings chapter 22, there's a very interesting story. The wicked king Ahab had approached the godly king Jehoshaphat, and they had made an alliance to go to war together against a particular foreign power. Ahab had 400 false prophets in his courts, prophets who prophesied lies to him, why to get on his good side. And they said, King Ahab, do what is in your heart, you will be victorious. But King Jehoshaphat was wiser and he said, is there not another prophet of the Lord this time who we can call upon? And Ahab said, yes, there's one, but I don't like him because he never prophesies anything good for me. And they called in that prophet and the prophet said that, you know, the Satan had had a strategy that uh, he would put a lying spirit in the mouth of his false prophets to Ahab. But this prophet revealed not only the strategy, but he said the word of the Lord over you, King Ahab, is that you will not survive this battle. You will die. And that is exactly what happened. There's always danger when we become biased and choose politically for one side as opposed to the other. What do we need to learn from this? As all of us as prophets worldwide need to learn, number one, we are always to test prophetic words and prophetic revelation. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, test everything. That's not a suggestion, that's a command. Test everything and keep the good. It wasn't just the prophets who needed to test their words to discern whether or not the words that they spoke out were coming from their souls or from the spirit, but we as the church of Jesus Christ also need to learn to weigh correctly and judge prophetic words that are being spoken out, not only in our churches, but also nationally. So test everything and keep the good. Number two, we need to learn to recognize the spiritual advisors in our lives. Many people, you know, it's just when God gives prophetic revelation, we, we receive the revelation, we come up with an interpretation, and we think because it feels good, it must be the will of God, and so we prophesy that as the word of God. However, spiritual advisors also in the prophetic will help us to be wise in knowing not only how to deliver a prophetic word, but when to deliver a prophetic word and what to say and what not to say. Now, I need to say that the prophetic movement in 2020, myself, but also many other prophets, we prophesied that God had given the prophetic movement steam. He was breathing on it with his Holy Spirit and that the prophetic word would increase in authority. Part of that increase in authority has to do with prophesying things specifically. Sometimes we're going to get them right, but sometimes we're going to get them wrong. Why? Because once again, we see through a glass darkly on this side of eternity, and even the best prophets can miss it sometime. 
And so we need to use the spiritual advisors and also the fathers and the mothers in the prophetic that God has given us. He's given them wisdom. We need to use them to try and do our best in avoiding mistakes when we can, but recognizing that sometimes we're going to make mistakes and we just need to be prepared to take the fallout from that. Number three, be humble. And we need, I personally believe, and I know that there are others who will disagree with me on that, but I personally believe that when we prophesy an inaccurate prophetic word, that we need to be willing to apologize for it. I know that there are those who say, you know, the prophets in the Bible who prophesied words that didn't come out because there are so many other factors at play when we prophesy a word and for that word to come out. Um, yeah, that, you know, it's just the prophets in the Bible didn't uh, apologize. However, I would like to suggest to you, we are not living in Bible times in that sense. We are living in the last days. And in order for the prophetic movement not to lose credibility, sometimes we just need to be humble and say, you know what? I thought this was God, but I missed it. And I am sorry. A while ago, I was doing a broadcast with, uh, with uh, God TV and with Cheyan, and I shared with him the story of once, you know, when I prophesied over a lady, you know, I just saw fruitfulness, fruitfulness, fruitfulness. And the power of God was so strong on her life that she just dropped to the ground and rolled around. The whole room was a mess because she upset tables, etc. But when she was able to talk, I heard her story and she said, you know, me and my husband, we've been trying to get pregnant for so long and it hasn't happened. And uh, so as a result, when you prophesied that, she said, it meant for me that we would eventually get pregnant and have a child. And I thought one plus one is two, fruitfulness, pregnancy. Yes, that's what it means. And so I confirmed her or assured her that that would happen because God had spoken. A year later, I got a call that she had had to have a hysterectomy because they had found cancer in her uterus. And that just cut me to the heart. When she was well enough to return to work, I called her and I asked her if I could come over. And I just said to her, you know what? I don't know what happened. Actually, these days, I don't know what happened. These days I do, I was presumptuous and hadn't asked God if my interpretation had lined up with what he meant. But I did say to her, I want to ask your forgiveness for prophesying a word that raised your hopes that didn't come to pass. And you know what? As a result, she did forgive me and they still accept prophecy in their church. But sometimes we just need to, you know, lay aside our pride and say sorry. A fourth thing that we need to learn is to let the love of Christ prevail. I've already spoken earlier in uh, this talk about the fact that when we allow our political preference to separate us from brothers and sisters, we have gone too far. This is not the will of God. So we have to let the love of Christ prevail. I believe that in 2021, Satan is going to try and push our buttons more than ever before to cause us to separate. Why? Because in Genesis chapter 11, when the people were united and came together, in language and in heart to build the Tower of Babel, God looked down and he said, now that they are united, nothing shall be impossible for them. This is going to be one of the strategies that Satan tries to throw at us, the Church of Jesus Christ this year, to separate us and divide us from each other. Please do not allow that to happen to you. And the fifth and the last thing that I do believe we need to learn from this is once again, do not despise prophecies. Some of you who are listening, who are yeah, Christians who may have been skeptical about prophecy to begin with are saying, see, you know, I told you there's, you shouldn't listen to prophets. They're not true these days. God's word, however, is clear. Don't despise prophecy. How do we despise that? by stopping prophesying. So prophets continue to prophesy by forbidding our people in our churches to prophesy. I'm also a pastor and the Bible is clear. Prophecy is a gift from God. It's meant to be a blessing for the church. So we do not forbid prophecy. We do not stop prophesying. However, we need to learn. So we need to get trained for this. And in conclusion, 
I just want to remind us too, the prophetic movement is a young movement. We've known those with shepherding gift, pastors and teachers since the Reformation. They've been around for 500 years. However, the prophetic movement really broke through and came onto the scene in the 80s. So the prophetic movement is only 40 years old. It's a young movement. And this year and this decade, we're going to see the prophetic movement become mature and come into its own. But as I talk about humility, and I want to end with that, it requires humility from us as prophets to be able to learn what we need to learn and adjust. But it also requires humility from church leaders and from those who do not prophesy. Why? that humility to say, hey, if they can get it wrong, I can get it wrong. That humility is required, not just for prophets, but for the other giftings too. And as we practice these things, humility and love, and as we are teachable and learn, the entire body of Christ will be blessed. God bless you for 2021 and for the years following. And I hope that you've been encouraged by this message.